In this video we're going to be looking at parallel lines and angle properties whenever you've got a transversal, that's a line that cuts the parallel lines. So if you look at this, you can see that some angles look the same. So for instance, I look at this one and I think, well, this one looks similar to this one. And now you, you can sort of think, well, this one might be similar to that one. Now, actually, they are all linked to each other, all these angles, okay? And we're going to be looking at these. Uh, there's different angles that we're going to be looking at. Uh, some are going to be called alternate angles. Alternate. Some will be called corresponding. There will be vertically opposite angles. That's actually on its own uh, video, okay? So vertically opposite angles. So watch the video called vertically opposite angles to see what they are. And there are also co-interior angles, co-interior angles. So we're going to be looking at these four types of angles in today's lesson. So showing our alternate angles. So you've got your two parallel lines and your transversal. And you've got your two angles here and here are going to be the same as each other. Okay, so they are called alternate angles, and these two angles here would be the same as each other. So again, these are called alternate angles. Sometimes people call these Z angles because they sort of follow a Z shape here and a sort of a backward Z here, but they're known as alternate angles. And if asked what you know what type of angles are in an exam, definitely say alternate, not Z angle. Okay, now showing our corresponding angles. So obviously, as these two lines are parallel. The line that cuts them will cut them at exactly the same angles. So therefore this angle and this angle would be the same. And this angle and this angle would be the same. Sometimes these are called F angles because as you can see with the dotted line they have like an F shape and they're the bits underneath the two branches of the F or the two arms of the F. Um, but they're called again corresponding angle. And make sure in the test, here would be a backwards F. Make sure in the test that you would say that they're corresponding and not F angles. Also, these would be corresponding angles as well, okay? So an upside down F, okay? So the lines, obviously, as this line cuts the two parallel lines at the same angles, then the ones on the top would be the same, and the ones there would be the same. So they're called corresponding because they correspond to the appropriate angle whenever the line cuts the other parallel line. And finally, we've got co-interior angles. So whenever you've got your two parallel lines and the line that cuts them, the angle here and here would add to 180 degrees. And here and here would add to 180 degrees. Well, if you think about it, this angle here would be corresponding to this angle here. Therefore, because these two are in a straight line, if you take that away from 180, then it would leave you this angle. So therefore, if you add this one and this one, it would add together to give you 180. Okay, so these two angles are co-interior and therefore they add to 180 and these two would be co-interior and add to 180. They're sometimes called C angles or if it, the parallel lines are like that, U angles, okay, but again call them co-interior angles. Finally, for this video you will also see, uh, I'll be talking about vertically opposite uh, angles, um, vertically opposite. And there's a video on vertically opposite angles, but it's just saying that this angle here would be the same as this one. The opposite angles are the same whenever two lines cross. So these two would be the same here and here. These two would be the same here and here. These two would be the same here and here. And finally there and there. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. So obviously with two parallel lines and a line that cuts them, if this was 112 degrees, this would also be 112 degrees. Um, these would be corresponding angles. Obviously this angle corresponds to this one as the line cuts both parallel lines. Okay, so that, they would be the same because they're corresponding. Okay, if this angle was 120 degrees, this angle would be 120 degrees. This time, it's a Z angle, or an alternate angle. If you were to turn it this way, you would see you've got your Z shape. Okay, so these, this angle, these angles are alternate. Therefore, they're in there. Therefore, they're equal because they're alternate angles. Okay, this time we've been asked to calculate X. Now, as you notice, these are co-interior angles. These two angles will add to 180. So if you do 180, subtract 128, you will get what size X is. So X would be 52 degrees, so 52 degrees. Okay, this time we've been asked to calculate X. Now, if you were to consider your corresponding angles, your F angles, this angle would be the same as this angle. So therefore, this is 70 degrees. Because these turn a straight line with each other, if this is 70 degrees, this angle here would be 110 degrees. So X is 110. Okay, this time we've been asked to calculate X and Y. Now, first of all, I would... Uh, make sure you know where the two parallel lines are. So the two parallel lines this time are vertically like so, okay? So, I mean, you could look at that way if you wanted to turn it. You could turn it and look like that if you wanted to. 
but this is fine. So first of all, I'm going to look at this angle Y. If you notice, the 68 and the Y are corresponding angles because it's the same line that cuts the two parallel lines. So you've got your, I suppose it's an F shape. So here and here, they would be the same as each other. Uh, so these two are the same, so this is 68 degrees. 68 degrees, and because it's corresponding with the 68, the y's. Now let's calculate our x. Now again, let's have a look at our corresponding angles, okay? This angle is the same as this angle here. So this angle here is 72 degrees, okay? Again, you could turn your page and have a look there. You can clearly see that's where they're corresponding. So if we take 72 away from 180, we'll get what x is. So 180 take away 72 would be 108 degrees so x is 108 degrees okay just want to show you something notice that the x and the 68 aren't co-interior because these aren't the parallel lines these are the parallel lines so these would be co-interior here and here here and here and so on okay um make sure you can you're noticing where the parallel lines are okay so the 72 and the 72 there would be the same so the x is 108 because they're on a straight line so here's a typical exam question. It's given you two parallel lines, a line that cuts them, and it says write down the value of x. So if you notice, the x and the 123, they are corresponding. You can see that they would be the same angle. Okay, So it's 123 degrees, and they are corresponding. Obviously write that in a proper sentence, but they're corresponding angles. Okay, now, here's another exam question. We've been asked to calculate the angle Y. Now, this question can be done using all three different types of the angles we've talked about so far. You could use corresponding angles. So you could yeah, say that the 68 would be the same as this angle here. So this angle here would be 68 degrees. And then these two in a straight line. So you take the 68 away from 180, and you'd be left with 112 degrees. Alternatively, you could use the Z angle, the alternate angle. This angle here would have to be 68 using, see, the Z shape. So that would be 68 there, and then again that would be 112 degrees. Or finally, you could use the co-interior angles. You could take the 68 away from 180 to calculate this angle here, because as you can see there, co-interior. That would leave you with 112, and that's vertically opposite. Actually, four different types of angles, that's vertically opposite to y. So any of those ones would be the reason, if any of those methods would be suitable. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways to solve these questions. We hit this time it's got different letters and you have to label which letter is vertically opposite or alternate or corresponding to another angle. So it says which angle is vertically opposite to A. So if that's A, the one vertically opposite would be C. Which angle is alternate to F? So you can see your Z angle. See here your Z. So that means that your D and the F are alternate to each other. So it would be D. And finally, which angle is corresponding to C? So if this line cuts the two parallel lines here, there, that angle and that angle will be corresponding to each other. So it's going to be G. Last question, actually, it's going to have a little bit of algebra involved within it, okay? And we've been asked to calculate the angle X and the angle Y. So the first thing I would do is I would look at this 105 and these two angles here. The 105 and these two angles will add up to 180, okay? Therefore, if these add up to 180, I know that these two would be 75 degrees. See the way, if this is 100, 180, well, if I had 180 and I take away my 105, I get 75 degrees. So I know that these two angles, because they're in a straight line, uh, these two angles will be 75 degrees. So that means if I add these two angles up, it would be 75 degrees. So 2x plus x is 3x, so you get 3x equals 75 degrees. So if you divide both sides by 3, you're going to get the x is equal to 25 degrees. So this angle here would be 25 degrees, and this angle, because it's 2x, double x, it would be 50 degrees. Let's just have a look at that. Okay, now, because these two lines are parallel, you can see a z angle. The y and the 2x, see there in the z shape, you've got your z angle here. That means that y would be 50 degrees. Okay, so let's just recap that. Because that's 105, that leaves 75 degrees for this section, and that's 3x. So that means if you divide it by 3, you get x is 25. The 50 here and the y are alternate angles. See the z shape? So that means that the z shape, so that means that the y is 50 degrees. You could have done the second part of the question differently. Um, actually, you could do you could do the question in a totally different approach if you wanted. You could see that if this is 105, this angle is co-interior, so that's 75 degrees. 
So that means that this 75 and these 3x's are a z-angle, alternate angle. So you'd write 3x equals 75, divide by 3 and get x is 25 again. You could then, I suppose, take this 75 away from 180 to get this as 105. Add on the 25 to be 130, and then that would leave 50 for the y. So there's different approaches to these questions.